Wow. Can you believe it? I feel like the year just started and we are like deep into the year already. And I really do think that this year is going to be such a fun and exciting year in the world of web design. There's going to be some trends that first off have probably gone away already, which I actually made a video about that if you want to check that out. But there's going to be some pretty exciting trends that are going to be popping off this year. And in this video, I'm going to go over six website trends that you're probably going to see more and more of uh, in the world of web design. And also, these trends are probably things that we need to start experimenting and doing. And then we're going to go over some things on how we can implement them in our websites. Let's get right into it. Now, the first trend that I believe is just going to pop off this coming year is going to be something that's probably not a surprise to those of you in the web design community, especially those in the Webflow community. And that is 3D animations. Yes, I believe that we're just going to see more and more exponentially bomb websites that are integrating 3D interactions where 3d objects are interacting with your scroll with your click with your hover with your mouse movement whatever it may be i mean imagination is going to go wild with 3d animations and i believe that is because a lot of these website builders are now uh, opening up opportunities where people can integrate some of the 3D uh, software like Blender or Spline. And Spline is some one that we like to use over in our agency. Um, like even just recently, Webflow, I think last November, Webflow uh, opened up a Spline integration where you can integrate Spline directly into Webflow and you can uh, control the interactions of your 3D objects that are made in Spline with uh, with your website in Webflow. In fact, uh, one of our clients, one of our enterprise clients, literally messaged us uh, during the Webflow Conf, uh, during Webflow Conf, after they, they had the keynote where they unveiled the 3D Spline interaction. They said, yo, we got to have this on our website. And now we're working on it. It's actually a pretty cool uh, feature where it's showing the satellites that they're creating where you click it and it's like you can interact with the different pieces of the satellite. It's going to be pretty awesome. But 3D is just going to pop off more and more this year. I have an example of a website that really captures this really well. And this was actually made by a uh, an integral part of the Wealtho community, a super talented web designer, web for developer, uh, Diego Oliveira. Shout out to my boy, uh, Diego. He made this website. Actually, I think it was like a week or a couple of days after Webflow conference, after they unveiled the Spline integration. And just to show really how Spline can be integrated um, into your website, a 3D object can be integrated, integrated into your website. And so here is an example of how this can really be shown with your website. Notice that these objects are moving as you scroll down. And in fact, they can also, as you move your mouse, you're interacting with the can as well. I think 3D interactions are going to be uh, um, really uh, crucial, not crucial, but really useful for objects, for products, for those websites that are selling products, that are launching like an actual physical products. Like, you know, right now, a lot of AI products are coming out. Uh, I think 3D interactions are going to be really uh, useful for showing these different products. So you can kind of look around and look through them. So I think there's going to be a big trend this coming year. Now, trend number two that I think we're going to see more and more this coming year are more natural images. Now, I talked about the flip side of this on our, another video where I talked about trends that we need to move away from, that we should leave behind, and that is stock images. Now, I know we're going to go ahead and move away from stock images. That's actually been moved away from like a long time ago, all right? We don't do normal stock images where it's like, you know, a plain background and someone's going, eh, very cheesy picture, right? But I think we're going to move into a even more natural image. And I want to show you an example of that. For example, I love this website called uh, uh, wise.com for a company called wise. And if you scroll down, you see these images, they are much more natural. It's actually almost as if instead of a staged picture, it's actually more of kind of like a still where a, a, a still from a video from a film and this kind of popularized, you know, nowadays we're looking for more just 
raw and natural images instead of like really staged and set up pictures. I mean, you're even seeing that now in trends with like wedding photos where we don't want where we don't want the soft and amazing lighting. We want just more raw and natural type pictures. We're seeing that bleed into web design. And what I mean by not using stock images anymore, like I said, we're done away with the other one. But there's not a next level of stock images, okay? And we all get it from the same website. You know it, unsplash.com. I'm not against unsplash.com. In fact, I have pictures in unsplash.com. But for example, notice this image right here. I know this is like a step away from the stock images that we know of, that we talk about. But this is also, as you can tell, a stock image. You can tell that this image has been you know, uh, is, is staged and you can tell this guy, you know, th these people right here, even this guy was has probably been holding that smile for like five, 10 seconds now because that's like the 20th picture that they took. OK, so it's a next level of stock images that you may think may not look stock images on the surface, but it kind of is. Let me give you a little tip on how we can have more natural images instead of searching for images and like unsplash or something like that look for actually videos for stock videos okay for example go to pexels.com now this one i searched people in office this is what i had pop up in pexels.com i'm also going to search for people in office but instead of using photos i'm going to actually go to videos and we're going to search for videos of people in office now we're gonna grab one of these and let's say a good one would be something like uh let's say this one actually and so let's go ahead and play this video and what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and pause and look for a spot that we think is pretty good okay and we're gonna go ahead and screenshot that spot now of course make sure that you have copyright and all that stuff download the video properly and all of that don't be stealing from artists okay but now that i've screenshotted this video i mean check this out right that looks more natural than say something like this that actually looks like a natural image looks like it's part of a movie that they kind of captured so i think we're going to see more and more of these this year just more natural images website trend number three which i believe will pop off this coming year is actually probably my favorite one in the list. And I actually, I want to or incorporate this more and more in any websites that I create this year are floating nav bars. At least that's what I call them. I call them floating nav bars. What I mean by that, instead of the nav bar being just on top and it's, it looks like it's just naturally part of the website where it's kind of like, you can, it just like looks like a page, right? A nav bar is kind of sticking out and it's, it looks like it's a separate element. Uh, you can see a lot of these like products, right? Your product product screenshots or product UI, and that's bleeding into web design as well. An example of that would be in awards.com. Uh, and we all, a lot of, if you're a web designer, you probably know about awards.com. So you can see here to have a floating nav bar. And I actually love the choice that they made to put it on the bottom. It's just different, you know? Uh, you click home right here. Here are your different places you can go to. So we have a floating nav bar that takes you to the different parts of the website. And if you click this, it goes to some of the other pages. I personally love floating nav bars. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, it's, at least it's, uh, you know, it's always going to be there whenever you're scrolling down. So the nav bar is always available. It's almost like that. Kind of like in your iPhone when you have that home uh, sorry, not iPhone, like in your Instagram or something, like in the bottom or in your Facebook, in those bottom icons. It'd be pretty cool to have that on your website as well. So I think that's an upcoming trend this year, our floating nav bars. Website trend numero cuatro. And I think this is like going to be the website trend of this coming year. It's going to be like a revolution. Like, I think this is the, the this is like, you know, that like the little guy sticking up for themselves. It's time for this item of your website to shine. It is a, a much neglected. It has been long been neglected by web designers and website creators. But now no more. That is footers like footers are just going to pop off this year. People are going to put some thought into their footers we're gonna have tasteful footers and we're just gonna have amazing beautiful creative beautiful creative footers where in the past all we want is just hey just put the menu you know you put the list of links and then you have company logo to company information and like your copyright right privacy policy all rights reserved blah 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 
But now we're going to actually put more thought. Yes, we, of course, we're still going to have those. But I think we're going to put more thought on the footers this year. Uh, a footer that I love is right here in the Stripe Sessions, which is their conference. Now, a lot of times with designers, we'll, we'll think about the hero. I mean, the hero is the main thing we're going to think about, right? And we really want to make sure we start out with the, the hero and we design the rest of the website. And then once we get to the footer, we'll just put the links, put the copyright, put the information, and we're done. But now, look at that. They're, they're, their call to action is all combined to one footer. Their call to action is there. It's big. It's bold. It's carefully thought out. It's even kind of like... Like a, a replica of the hero i mean if you think about this it's almost like um I, so on the side i'm an english teacher and i teach about writing sometimes I, I teach about literature writing and in a paragraph you have something called a topic sentence and then you have a conclusion right the topic sentence is the what the purpose of the sentence what the sentence will be talking about and then the conclusion is a summary or not a summary i'm sorry but a a, re, a restatement of the topic sentence this is this right here this is a conclusion sentence. Uh, this is just restating the hero, conf reconfirming the hero. So I think this is really cool. And I think part of this revolution was brought about by this right here, which is footer.design. It was created by, holy cow, I just forgot. I think it was created by Benton Woodring. There you go. Benton Woodring and his crew, Devin Fountain, all of them. Now, uh, super talented web designers and part of the uh, major part of the Webflow web design community as well. They have a collection of beautifully designed footers. So I recommend this website. Get some inspiration from here. I'm going to start in Copa. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to make a decision this year. I'm going to think about footers a little bit more. I'm going to care about them a little more and put some thought into my footers. So check that out. Check out this website. And I think footers are going to be a big item a hot item this coming year. Now, trend number five is something that's actually already been a trend. And I feel like it's a trend every year. And I feel like it's also a trend that's not going to go away anytime soon. And that are, that is, that are, that is, that is bento box sections. Yes, bento box. Now, if you don't know what that is, if you've never been to a Japanese restaurant where they have a bento box, it's usually a box with the 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 boxes are laid out with different sizes because one is a little bit bigger. You can put your fish there or your chicken and your rice. And then another one's a little smaller. It's got your salad. Another one's a little smaller. It's got your little four California rolls and all that stuff. A bento box. And we see that now in websites. It's actually popularized. I think, at least, it was popularized by Apple. Uh, they used to do it on their websites. Now they do it a lot in, like, their product unveilings. Like, you know, once they revealed the product, <clears throat> to summarize everything they talked about, they usually create a bento box section. Now, I'll show you a website that uses the web bento box uh, really, really well. And that is Marco, Marco.fyi. Marco is a designer at Figma, and this is his personal portfolio. Now you can see... There, he's utilizing this bento box sections. And this is actually really useful. I mean, if you are creating a SaaS website and you want to show all the features, or if you're creating a portfolio website, you want to show all your different work, and uh, you want to show it in a way where people can kind of see all the information, uh, but still laid out in a way where they can kind of take one piece at a time, bento boxes are really, really effective for that so here's an example of a bento box section and go check it out yourself and go try it out yourself on your next web design and for the very last website or web design trend for this coming year is something that some people would be like wait what isn't it on the last video you kind of talked against this and talked bad about it but now it is an upcoming trend no listen i'm not against it I think it's awesome. What I talked about is to make sure it's not used in the wrong way. Now, I'm talking about this coming year. An, an upcoming trend would be micro animations. Now, not just animations. I'm talking about micro animations. Now, like I said on the last, on one of my videos, I talked about how uh, 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 animations, I talked about tasteless animations are unnecessary because they are instead, instead of enhancing the user experience, they're damaging the user experience. Now, micro animations, if done correctly, can greatly enhance the user experience and really accelerate your storytelling in your website. 
And I love micro animations. I think we need to incorporate that more and more. Now it's a little bit harder and it takes a little bit of imagination and creativity. And we are creatives after all, but look into doing some micro animations. Now, what website am I going to show you? It's going to be the same exact website, which is Marco.fyi. Fun fact, I got to meet Marco at WebflowConf last year in November. We were introduced by a mutual friend, Matt Varhees. Shout out to Matt and shout out to Marco. Anyways, uh, Marco.fyi. Uh, you can see some micro animations here. Now, this one right here, we see uh, uh, you can kind of click these, right? Though it's part of the bento box. It's really just like uh, it, this is a really creative way to show the different links in this website, okay? And look at that. That's awesome. Even with the clicks, like, ah, oh, love that. Uh, notice here when you uh, uh, put your mouse in, it comes in, and then you scroll up and down and it's showing this product now what is he well he's trying to be a product designer not trying to be he already is a product designer uh this portfolio definitely helped it shows you his product design handiwork right uh, here as well when you hover over we got a little micro animation there like these are just so creative and just so awesome i mean man so creative like i love it i if i whenever i see something like this I just go like, what the heck? How did you th think of that? How did you come up with that? Uh, this is just amazing. That's how people get paid the big bucks. You know what I'm saying? But this is awesome. Micro animations. Think about it on your next web design, your next website that you're going to make. Think about some ways you can incorporate little animations like this that really tell the story and incorporate um, uh, uh, that, that enhance the storytelling of your website. And that marks the end of today's video. If you stuck around, thank you so much for watching. You are my homie. And if you stuck around here at the end of this video, why don't you put something in the comments below? First off, like the video, right? And then put a comment below. What was your favorite trend? Just do one word. You don't even have to put a whole explanation. Just put a word. Put like micro animations or 3D animations or I hated all of them or, or stop posting YouTube videos. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe to the Unfinished YouTube channel. What is Unfinished? Unfinished is the design agency that I founded. And we are a Webflow expert, a web design agency, a Webflow expert agency. And we help uh, uh, startup uh, companies at the enterprise level and at the startup level create beautiful and innovative websites. And in this channel, we post a video every single Wednesday about web design, web design tips, web flow development tips, and anything design, web design related. So make sure you subscribe. Thank you so much once again for watching. Have a good day. Bye.